computer. What's up, Dave? What's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming. Uh, are you in El Cerrito right now? Yeah. Dude, do you realize, I say this all the time, but two Rock and Roll Hall of Fame bands from El Cerrito. It's insane. Credence and Metallica. Isn't that pretty insane when you really think and, and a grit to those bands, like not there, there's a thread through those bands. So I feel like there is something to uh, to that to that town. that's just so rock. It, yeah, I'm with you. And, and, you know, I read I read John Fogarty say years ago that he used to go to, uh, I guess, maybe a diner or something that's probably not there anymore at, at the El Cerrito Plaza and right here it's, before they were signed. So God. like wrote like these classic hits that everyone in the world knows at the plaza. <laughs> and, and the thing that was they blew their mind. And it worked because there were songs about faraway places like Louisiana, but usually that sounds fake, but he sold you on it. And it's just so I crazy. Never, well, well, I remember when I heard that he was from like the Bay, I was like, wait, what? I mean, I, I thought he was from New Orleans. What do you mean he's from? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a really- He's from here? Come on. Yeah, and the Metallica, the Metallica house being right there, it's crazy. And I for those, would you say? No, I, I used to go sit and like me and my friend would go drive by there and like eat lunch in high school, sitting in front of that house. Those poor people, whoever lived there in the nineties, oh had like had me and all sorts of other weirdos to contend with, just like, whoa, oh, man. man. Yeah, and and El Cerrito is a town out just in the East Bay, outside of San Francisco. For those that don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's cool town. Um, what do you call it? So you've been teaching a lot. I called you. You were you were doing some lessons, right? Yeah, man. Ever ever since the shutdown happened, um, I just have been teaching full time. I I I've taught for like twenty years. I used okay. to teach um, before I was in Tesla, um, just part time and, and kind of would ebb and flow. But I always kept it up. And then when we were busy with you know when I joined Tesla, and was busy on tour. Um, I, I actually would still do it when I'd be home, um, just sort of like almost as a hobby because it was fun and I had a couple of regulars and I actually have, I've always really enjoyed doing it. So I do a couple lessons here and there um, and it slowly had transitioned to doing it on Skype anyways because I had met a lot of people on the road who asked for lessons. I'm like, yeah, sure, we can do it. I'll just, we can do it on the computer. So I was luckily already used to doing it. Like it was, it's a huge like sort of advantage. And then when when realized nothing was going to be happening for a while, um, I just sort of kind of put the word out a little bit that I'll be teaching more and luckily got a bunch of new students. And so that's I mean, I'm Monday through Friday, like full time guitar teacher now online. It's it's crazy. Well, it, to teach it, there, there's a vibe that you have to have. I really think it's a, it's when I was a kid, I took lessons from a guy, Buddy Savino, that taught me so much. And he was just a local jazz bass player. He went on to play with Bernard Purdy. But and I also took him Dave LaRue, but he wasn't nice enough to connect with me. And I think teaching like playing, there's there's a connection and a warmth that you have that that I, I could see students just lighting up about. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that's a, a, an issue because I, I've, you know, over the years and, and especially now with a lot of the new students, I, I've met a lot of people who they're like, yeah, I, I used to take lessons, but the guy was kind of a jerk or he, he made me do all this stuff that I really didn't want to learn. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, so I like, I mean, I teach everybody the, the stuff they need to know, but it's not that hard to make the stuff that somebody needs to learn fun. Like, you know, yeah. like teach them a song that they love because it's probably got some of those techniques in it. So totally. if, if you're going to learn an Aerosmith song, you're going to be more excited to play and you'll still learn the same stuff as if I was teaching you some like classical thing, you know? Yeah. Do you remember your first teacher and where and when? And did you have it? Some people didn't have a teacher. I, I feel like you had a teacher with all the technical I did. ability. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, um, I, I big... because I started young. I mean, uh, I, I started when I was nine. And so I definitely had a teacher. And I if I hadn't, I would have told Nine? Him. You started it? In, wow, that's awesome, man. I never would have lasted if I hadn't. Because it, it's really, I mean, it's hard period. But like, uh, you know, at, at that age, like, you know, plus there was no YouTube or anything, right? So yo, yeah, you know, lessons I, were everything. I'm a big but, fan. Oh yeah, I mean, I I I, uh, I I learned from a guy who who he actually taught John Fogerty how to play years before, which is a weird co coincidence. And he was like a folk guy. He knew okay. Pete Seeger, kind of in the whole Berkeley Oakland folk scene. And so I, I didn't even. I, I all I did was play acoustic and like 
we we learn songs and like sing them. Right. And that was how I learned. I didn't do soloing or or scales or electric till I'd already been playing for three or four years. Um, and like right when I started again to like rock and Guns N' Roses and all that. And then I switched to another another teacher around middle school and started learning more solos and improv. And then high school, I switched to another guy, uh, Doug Doppler. You might know, he's like a shred dude who used to teach with Joe Satriani and um, like super shred technique. Is that, there's always that special teacher when you've learned enough technique that, that helps you really hit those three pointers. Was that that guy? You know, it, it, yeah, but he taught me a lot of the technical stuff. He was fantastic, but it was kind of a mix and it kind of all hit me later, actually. I, I stopped taking lessons after high school and it was sort of after everything. Yeah. When I was then, then I had all the pieces and then it kind of sort of melded together. I don't know. It was just, yeah, it was the slower process for me. But I was, you know, I'm, I think lessons are great. I, I've always been a big, uh, you know, believer in it. You know, I so and when I, when I got to Hollywood, you know, coming from Jersey, everybody could kind of play like you mm -hmm. saw Skid Row, Scott, all those guys knew how to play. Yep. And I couldn't believe there were all these people that didn't take lessons that couldn't play. You know what I mean? And, and, and it was like it, it was and I know it works out sometimes. But for the most part, what I was seeing was these bands looked incredible, incredible. They look more crew than crew. <laughs> but then I'd see them play and be like, Oh my God, he looks like he's plucking grass when he's playing the bass. It's just like you know what I mean. Like yeah, you're just like seriously, like like you said, it's it's occasionally it works, but most of the time it doesn't. Someone said that to me the other day. Well, don't you think I was doing some podcast or a, a interview thing with a bunch of other people? And well, don't you think like lessons like take away your originality? Oh. I was like. That's the dumbest thing I've ever. It heard. really is. It's something in Hollywood. It's something in Hollywood. You know, I I like the Ramones, but I don't play them on my show because I realized in Hollywood there was this Ramones Iggy Pop, and that's all great and it worked for them. The ones it worked for, right. that people blamed everything of why they didn't have to do the work. Exactly, exactly. dude. Yeah. Okay, because yes, Slash didn't take lessons. Neither did Joe Perry. Neither did Eddie Van Halen. But those guys are special. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, let, and let's look at their dads. Let's look at their dads, too. You know what I mean? Like Eddie sure. Van Halen's dad he grew up in a lesson. Come Slash's dad is painting Bowie album covers. So you don't tell me someone's not crawling in his room from Bowie's band showing him some licks. So exactly. Dude. Maybe it's he didn't thing. sit in a room. That's the like he might not have sat in the go to the room B. Your lesson's ready. But I, right. I have a feeling. There were lessons there. Yeah, totally. You know, and so, you know, 90 percent of people without lessons are going to either just not be that good or give up after a while. And I'm totally one of those people. I would have given up. I needed someone to show me how to put my fingers. Cause Absolutely. It's really hard. So most people who don't take lessons just end up not being that great or, or not even if they're not that great. But, you know, they kind of get to a point and then they're sort of plateaued and they, they don't know why they can't get any further. Yeah, yeah. The technical thing they don't understand. But anyway, and then, so, and then well, when the, and then, and then when the opportunity, it's funny. I remember going to remember the pound. Oh, I love that place. I walked in it and you had this, this, it was empty, not empty, but there was this band of servants on and it was you, Chris from Machine Head, Tony, who's just one of the greatest singers yeah. and Marco on bass. And this band was firing on all cylinders. But I swear to you, Dave, when I walked up, I remember you had a nose ring in and it reminded <laughs> me of being a kid in high school and seeing Zach play the fitness express of my, the, the aerobic, like that guy's just something's connecting. We were like, Whoa, like that guy just had that thing. You know I mean? You had that thing from day one. Dude, thank you so much. And then, uh, you know, so an opportunity came a knock and you were ready. And I also remember you always had like a lot of jobs along with teaching guitar. There were always, we, 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 do I remember dogs being walked yeah, and wreck and Rasputin's yeah. and like, <laughs> Like a lot going on, man. This Dude. guy's doing this and rock. This is not a rock dummy here. That's what I love about you out of the gate. It was funny. It was because I, I was just, I, I always would have a bunch of like tiny, it was all musician stuff, right? Like it was everyone I knew was the same thing. It was like, you had like three or four little jobs that like you can move around band rehearsals and like little mini tours and shit. So yeah, I, I was teaching guitar. I was working at a rehearsal studio. And then my my main job was walking dogs. So I'd, I'd go up into the hills in, in Oakland and, and go to rich people's house and walk their dogs all day. Then I'd go teach a couple lessons and then go to rehearsal for like eight hours. And then the next night I'd be working at the studio. You know, it was just, I don't know how I kept anything straight back then.
I mean, and you seem great. You just because it's a love of music and a love of I'm going to do this. And then when uh, I mean, I, I always like I try not to research anything. I try to think the picture in my head of what I remember of our time. Like, yeah, yeah. Wasn't there a MySpace connection to you getting in Tesla with Craig? Wasn't yeah. that like yeah, and the thing great. is, you were ready for all the lessons. You were ready to step up. But why don't you tell that story of our friend Craig? Yes. Uh, yeah, ruffians, the butlers. He's a great dude. Craig and Pam are such great people. He's absolutely man. He's the best. And so because Craig was in Trouble Horse. Remember? Trouble yes, Horse? yes, I do. Yon. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the DeLorean the- mechanic. Didn't he fix like DeLoreans or something? <laughs> I think he did. I know he, he did. On he did. Weird Italian car. Yeah. Some some that. form of a yeah. Some form if of a cocaine would, car. He, cocaine oriented car. He, he would probably be able to like machine you a new part for your yes, DeLorean. Yes. And, 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 and that and, and maybe that's a guy that didn't need lessons. Jan would strike me as someone because just if you could. Amazing. You just might have that, that. That's that DNA. That that strange oh, yeah. DNA. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, Craig was, I mean, he was in the ruffians, uh, still is, I guess. And, and now he's in the butlers who are amazing. But in back in those days, what early two thousands, he was in trouble horse. And I feel like someone else anyways, we do gigs together. So I knew him, uh, and he's just in the circle. Everybody knows each other around here. And, um, he's, he, he, uh, we always were friends, stayed in touch. He happened to have me on his top eight friends on his MySpace page. Remember you were in that? his top eight. Yes. I was in the top eight with a, with a photo from one of those shows. We did a couple of servants. We did some DNA shows at the DNA yeah, yeah. With, uh, for CD release parties. I remember going there and seeing Cont- Contos fucking yelling from the balcony, just screaming at everybody. <laughs> I love him, but let's... <laughs> I, he's one of my friends. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm anyway, sure, that, sure that was that the happened. show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. And we had like a photographer. And so there's some really good photos from there. Like it looked good. We had smoke and lights and shit. So anyways, one of these photos was my profile and it looked all pro. I mean, it, there was probably like a hundred people there, but it, the shot, made, it looked like, oh, that looks like a rock and roll thing. So anyways, fast forward a couple of years. Um, uh, I was literally out walking dogs. Frank Hannon <laughs> happened. Frank Hannon was talking to Craig because he, you know, he was looking for guitar players. But Craig's got a really successful T-shirt making business, and you know, other bands. So he 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 was too busy. So he's like, dude, I I, I can't do it. But no, actually, he didn't do it. They were just on the phone. <laughs> While on the phone, Frank's looking at Craig's MySpace page and goes, Hey, who's this dude? Dave Root. Oh yeah, Dave, he's hella cool. You should call him. <laughs> so it was literally because I was on his top eight by accident, like un- unreal. And he emailed me that day. Um, and I got home, Craig called me. Hey dude, Frank Cannon from Tesla might send you an email just giving you a heads up that it's the real Frank Cannon. Cause otherwise I, mean, I wouldn't have believed it. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah. Wow. Hey, I remember, I remember where I was. I remember the dog I was walking and what, where I was. I was like, where were you? Where were you? Tell me where you were. You, you know, I don't remember the name of it. There's this park up in um, like Montclair. And there was this one visit. I would just walk these dogs down into these trails. And I remember I was almost at the end of the visit and I was like, what? <laughs> like, I was like, this is amazing. You know? And at that point it was just that, he wanted someone to be in his solo band for like two weeks. It was, it was just a little thing, but yeah. still I was a huge oh, yeah. Cannon fan. So I was like, what? That would be amazing. Cause he was looking for a guy to fill in a uh, second guitar on his solo band for a two week tour. Right. I was like, yeah. So I was still like over the moon stoked. So I get home. He, he had emailed me on MySpace, and I, I responded. No, because Craig gave me the heads up that it was legit. I emailed him back. We talked on the phone. Five days later, he was doing a show at the Boardwalk in Sacramento. Yeah. I drove up. He invited me to come jam. He had a couple of different guys get up with him and play. Um, and I did. Actually, one of my students just showed me last week. Um, there's YouTube of it, of that oh. night. It's crazy. I got We'll put and- it in the thread. We'll put it in the thread. Yeah, That'll yeah. be great. I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, send, yeah. I'll send you the link. So um, he had a bunch of different guys get up, which, you know, was... was crazy it was it was very surreal i I mean it was packed there's like oh and i know like for me like tesla one of those bands that as you got older got better you go whoa they were bad them and cinderella you're like wait they were better than i thought those are the two bands you're like they were better they were better than i thought they were totally man and i I was always a huge tesla fan cinderella's one of those bands i saw at the pound and that's when i was like oh my god these guys are like aerosmith like yeah yeah just just a band you go whoa they're better than i thought that tesla yes that and and um, so and I had, I had loved Tesla since since I was twelve. It was crazy. Oh, Cinderella, really? So you, yeah. Later. And and then and sort of saw the light after that. But Tesla, I was always like a huge fan of. And 
uh, so it was, I was like blown away. Anyways, so I went up there, jammed. We did Walk This Way and Stranglehold. It was really, really fun. So you got to play for like nine days because Stranglehold, yeah, I just played exactly. on my show. It's like nine days long. <laughs> it was, it was. Anyways, we, we jam, we stay, um, you know, he, he kind of told me that night he's looking for somebody for Tesla. And so it worked out a couple weeks or maybe a month later, we did the solo tour a month or two after that, I was in Tesla. It was crazy. Wow. And I remember when the transition was taking place, you were still being so cool to Marco and your friends. You were playing Lindy's on top of all the jobs, getting in Tesla in this little mini mall and, and you just always stayed as cool. It, I was like, Wow, with I think it was with that band of Living Things that night. Remember that was the night. I was trying to remember. Dude, I have an amazing memory. I'm ama I remember it like this is something's happening here. This is wild, and he's still being so good to his friends. And the Living Things are on stage. It was a wild, wild time. It was so. I was so green looking back because it's just so funny. Like then you get old, like wow, you realize how 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 innocent and, and so like naive but it was it was all good but it was just like wow, but you hang so on like even jeff talks about hanging on at the beginning so how did i hang on to this bowl for the first year you learn how to you know but jeff talks about i don't know how i hung on in the to the bowl at the beginning it's so weird yeah that's a good good way to put it and that's i think because i was so green i didn't know any better like i didn't know a lot of times when people ask me about it they i think and i would too they kind of assume there was some connection or like management or i had some agent like like i was a mover and a shaker yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah nobody yeah, yeah. i was just some jackass no i saw you just along with everybody there was no difference i dude like yeah, you see me play there'd be like 20 people it, there was no juice there was no buzz. no no i know it's like we got picked out of nowhere you know insane so, I think because if you don't know any better you're just like yeah this is awesome you, you just i don't know you don't think too hard about it well it's what i think in life you just gotta you got to take the swing. So many people overthink things, I think, in rock that I look at my old bands that, that did work like Blackboard Jungle. One thing I think was great. Would, we did everything. We said no to nothing. And some of the things were great. You know, I mean, I saw Kiss playing in the Macy's Day Parade on that bad U-Haul van that they ended up on. I go, that would have happened to me if I was in Kiss's position. Because <laughs> I just say yes to everything. You know what I mean? Why not? Yeah, you know, but uh, so then, the, you know, for me, it's wild as we talk. Because I remember that time. I do, dude. I remember the, the detention, the three people shows. You know, like, oh, I remember dude. you trying Joel's guitar out and you knew what gauge strings were on. So, and he goes, dude, he's fucking good, dude. He just dissected my guitar in his mind. That guy's fucking good. So, so now as we do this, you have your own Gibson guitar that is not only your own, but it's fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> that V, you want to talk about that? The Dave Roots, dude, a signature guitar. Dude, you were walking dogs when I met you. It seems like here is Lindy's. To uh, Lindy's, dude. Lindy's, Lindy's on a Tuesday to, to seven people, including the bartender. Yeah, no, man. I, it's been a couple of years now. It still blows my mind. Yeah, it, signature Epiphone. And, um, you know, one Epiphone's always been really great and, the great guitars but great to me as soon as i joined like a year or two after i joined tesla uh, i met the guy who at the time was president and he was really sweet we stayed in touch and like like literally on phones and even like the president was like yeah hey man what's going to hella cool so we all stayed in touch and then a couple of years ago it, it they made me this one-off that i had asked for um just for fun and i played it for a couple of years on tour and every single night i played it people would ask me what is that? Because it looks really cool. It's yeah, like, like yeah. even if you hated Tesla, you'd still like, yeah, I mean, if you were like, a, we saw those kids at NAM, those street kids that were just like, that's, it's just sharp and exciting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it just, it stands out, right? And so, it, so many people were asking about it and I played it all the time. I loved it. And uh, so I started talking like, hey, what about this? And, and you know, it kind of became a thing and they were super into it. And very quickly, it all just happened. And less than a year later, it, it came out and yeah it's cool i mean it's it just it it did pretty well it's still they still have it you know people are still they 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 made some more earlier in the year they ran out of the first run and they so people can get it. i'm going to put a link to that in the chat too that's an amazing yeah it's that, crazy um, man. it does blow my mind yeah and you and you sent one to jeff didn't you jeff from the smashing pumpkins and i remember one of the yeah. he just he he just took that out when i went out to see him in jersey and it was just 
mesmerized. Like for me, not now you don't only have your your guitar, but my friend is in Smashing Pumpkins playing Dave, who was playing the seven. This is insanity, man. This is <laughs> just this totally is weird. I know, man, exactly. And I mean, yeah, you sent me like videos. Of, I'm like, dude, the, the guy smashing what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Still, it blows my mind to see that. So it looks so cool. And, you know, and then, yeah, I mean, Jeff's like the most amazing guy, most amazing player and like to have him play one, it's like, it's pretty mind blowing. And it's didn't crazy. he join Smashing Pumpkins like right around the same time I joined Tesla? He did, you're right, you're right. I don't know the exact year, but it was the exact same time, I think. Cause I remember you told me about him and like kind of introduced us like on the phone or something. And yes, then, yes. And then we reconnected a couple of years ago more heavily. You're right, it's about the same time. Is, um, what has been some of your pinch me moments in Tesla? Give me one, like, whether it's someone you meet or someone you just been like, yeah, I mean, like from from like Lindy's and seven people to like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, gosh, yeah, I mean, a, a, a lot, I guess that first year a lot, just like all of a sudden playing to like these gigantic crowds, like it's ridiculous. Like, wait, wait, like we have security guards. What do you what do you mean we have security guards? <laughs> like, yeah. It's, oh, OK. It, it's I don't know, man. It's just just surreal. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, I mean, just a lot of the stuff in Europe, those festivals are just like yeah. outrageous. Like there's so many people, you know, like I guess that was the first tour I did. We, we did a show um, that happens every summer in, in Wisconsin called Rock Fest. Okay. And um, we were on there with, I can't remember who headlined that. We've done it a couple of times. Oh, I think it might've been Motley Crue. Like oh it was God. Motley. Wow. That one, yes. The, oh man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was in the band for like two months and we did the show. There was like 30,000 people. It's huge. I think we were main support to Motley. And um, so that alone, I mean, it was one of those shows like, like you see in growing up on TV or, or you know, vi live videos of like, I can't see the end of the people. Like, it yeah, was, yeah, okay. Us festival level. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, I mean, it wasn't that big, but it felt but no, like yeah, yeah, I it, literally it, couldn't see the end of the crowd. It was past the horizon because it was this outdoor thing. And and it was like, whoa, that was definitely a, oh, this is, this is actually happening. Um, and then after the show, I knew uh, the girl who was doing Motley's wardrobe from back in, at the Pound days. Oh, wow. And, Mick Mars's bracelet had broken during their show and she gave me one of the skulls. He had one of those like Buddhist skull bracelet things. Wow. And she, hey, you want one? She actually gave me two. So I put, I've worn this. <laughs> I get day. it. Molly was religion, dude. That's why I moved to California. Them and Guns N' Roses. Come on. And, and I got to meet Mick that night and nobody gets to meet Mick because he doesn't like hang. You don't see Mick like at catering. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I got like brought in to like shake his hand. He was super sweet. It was so cool. Oh, my God. Yeah. I've been backstage at one of your shows and seen you multiple times. And, you know, you really are a member of the band. We see different things where guys are in bands, but. Like Don Henley doesn't know the birthdays of the guys or the names, probably last names of the guys. And I actually saw that happen. That's what. But oh, really? you and Frank are like bonded. It's it's re, you're you're a member. And what do you think was the secret to that occurring, whether it's time or what? Like you're in it and and Pete, their fans respond to you. It's not it's 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 not just a gigger that's just come in for this gig. And it, it just feels like something's occurred. Yeah, I've another thing that has just always been really, really lucky, you know, because those, the, the dudes in Tesla are super nice. They've always been hella down to earth and hella just regular guys since I joined. And, and from day one, they were like, you know, we want you to join and actually be a member, not like, like you said, like a hired gun or, yeah. you know, so, I mean, within a few months of starting to be in the band, I actually was like officially like in as a member, which is amazing. Cause like you said, I mean, especially, yeah most of the bands with a newer member or two, those guys are not in the band. Yeah. And so it was very, very lucky that I, I got to do that. And I think it's just that they are hella cool and we all got along. Yeah. It just, you know, it felt, it's with Frank too, we always just felt like, I don't know, it just felt like we knew each other. I mean, I yeah. grew up on all the same stuff. Right? Yeah. And um, we had a lot of the same influences and, you know, uh, a watching that video that youtube from the, the night we first jammed me and frank um you know i was talking to to that student who, who talked about it and and she's like it just 
it was like you guys had already been playing together for a long time. And I was like, exactly. Like, yeah, it, it really, I remember to that. see it, like, but I get it. We, we, we just did a lot of trading off like improv stuff. And it was, it was like when I would jam with like that dude yawn or something, it's like, it just, you just know how to do it. And we knew how to play around each other. It, and it felt like there's a cosmicness to it. Yeah. Funness. And I was like, this is literally the first day I've ever met him, but it feels like I've been playing with him for years. And, and just musically, we just synced in. And when, when we, he would have me up to his house to start showing me the Tesla stuff, how it goes, like the actual parts and stuff for songs I didn't know, which I, you know, I didn't know a lot of them. Um, it, it just, it, I don't, it was just like a magical thing. Like it was, was kind of cosmic. It was like, yeah, yeah. This, it just works and it felt right. I never wanted to join a bigger band. I wanted to start my band from the ground up. Oh yeah. And you work very hard and still work hard at it. It's not, it's not, yeah. It's, it's right. It's, it's, yeah. I, I had, that's, you know, playing at the pound, all those sort of, a lot of the, the eighties bands on their sort of down we, when, we, get when when the the we get them on the way up we get them on the way down someone once told me at clubs like that yeah, yeah. exactly and and so, so you know we would open my older bands would open for those those um those band some of those bands and there's like one or two original guys and then a bunch of dudes from la who are like my age and like oh, yeah what the hell? this looks weird and i was like well i could probably do that but i don't want to do that i want to yeah. do my own thing but this felt different when i when i started you know, talking to Frank and then I met the other guys. I was like, this is amazing. And, and it actually feels right. Like I want to do this. And, and so it just was very sort of natural and organic. Well, th there's a high level. I've seen you with them many times and there's a high level musical conversation between you two on the guitars. It feels like a, a big conversation that takes place during a Tesla show. It's, it's not just a rhythm guitar and a guy playing leads. There's like either of you could easily, if one of you drop the ball, that's a train wreck. Cause there's, harmony lead, right am I, I mean i don't know enough about guitar but it seems like there's a big conversation going on between you two totally yeah there's there's that and that was another one of the cool things it was like you know I, uh, having always been a big fan of the band and then being able to like you said not just like go play the chords you know like i actually get to do fun stuff and then that frank and the other guys are all down with like improv too like it's like we play the the big solos and stuff. We both do it like the rest. Yeah. But there, there's also a lot of room for leeway of just making it up on the fly, and that's super fun. And like that, it's it's always kind of encouraged, you know. So that's cool. Um, it's it's always it's it's kind of part of the show. I mean, I think part of our fans, you know, a part of the reason a lot of the fans like it is that it's you know you get a little bit of spontaneity in there too. Well, it always felt Tesla always felt like that Skinner album, one for the road meets G and R to me. It felt like that, like a, awesome. like those two things came together, like more power. And I know Skinner has power, but just that, that working man's thing, but yet that same thing that those Hollywood bands had and metal bands, UK bands with the power. So something occurs. It's that's why it's so special and still around and still playing arenas stadiums you don't remember me you know yeah no absolutely i mean guns guns is one of my favorite bands probably my favorite i mean they're huge influence so and i always saw the correlation between like tesla aerosmith guns and roses yeah it's like they all came from the same sort of blame uh, uh vein or something you know yeah I, mean? I don't know why when i heard paradise city and tesla it reminded me of growing up and people that like, like these bands actually heard Leonard Skinner somewhere along yes. the way that are not headbangers ball. Totally, totally. Like, uh, you know, like you knew it in junkyard, obviously a more lower level band, but G guns and uh paradise city, just, it sounded like a skin. I felt like I was listening to Leonard Skinner and then, um, then Metallica by the end of the song and the same, right. you know, the same with Tesla. I felt like it started out in Skinner and ended in an Aussie harmony, like crazy lead. You know what I mean? Totally. It's like a, a mixing of all this stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's and those bands were mixes of other stuff, you know, which is but 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 it connects so much with people. And as we wrap up, one thing I was going to say is like, you're such a compassionate, good dude. What is the moment that you do, whether it's a solo, the reaction from a fan, the joy you give people that really makes your heart sing about this experience in Tesla? What's something because it gives makes, you know, Tesla make brings a lot of smiles around yeah no it's it's crazy i mean that's that might be it like just can you see that in the crowd do you feel that like does it you ever get severely moved when you just see the joy you're bringing like someone in it yeah totally and it's it's like love song and what you give those we oh do a love song every night but what you give we do almost every night depending on the set um and 
both of those songs like they really affect people and you know we do mean greets all the time and like every day almost every day that you meet people they tell you oh love song was our wedding song or what you give was our wedding song there's it's like not just that they love the song they've actually it's been a part of some yeah yeah in their life you know it's like so it, it's big for them so i mean on honest to god almost every single show during the intro to love song you look out and you see people crying in the front row or what you give you see like a couple like hugging and it, it's sort some kind of yeah it's it's when i i see i've seen you in many arenas and i get it but for some reason when i saw you in santa clarita and I saw yeah. my girlfriend just how lost she was in it, like like transfixed with those songs and in it and not sing, but mouthing every word. And I'm like, this is powerful, man. This is uh, this is pretty powerful. This is a, this is a moment that most bands don't get this. You know, what I mean, a Springsteen gets this, but this yeah. is, you know, but this it's that it's that 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 style of like that feel I would imagine. Right. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. We feel it. And, and uh, we're looking like, wow, this person is like you can see how much the song is affecting him. And it's just like, wow, this is amazing. So, yeah, I mean, that, those kind of moments are, are, are just really, really special. That's awesome. And well, Dave, thanks so much for hanging out. I had a great time talking with you. We'll get a hang on when this is all over. Yes. All That's right. Great. And uh, do you have any open slots for lessons? Because I'm going to put links in if uh, do you have some open. Yeah. Sl- OK, yeah, that'd be awesome. yeah, please do. Um, yeah, I do. I, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much Monday through Friday and, and I do have a couple of spots open. So, um, you know, anyone anyone wants to. I got I got, got <laughs> I got people literally all over the world, different countries, all over the state. So I'm teaching it. I got lessons sometimes at 8 a.m. here, you know, some. Wow. You know, it's a lot of fun, man. It's, and, and yeah, definitely. Definitely hit me up if uh, anyone's interested. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. Dude, thank you so much for having me, Britt. I hope we get to hang in in real life soon. We will. All right.